everyone. Good morning and you are all welcome to this parent webinar brought to you by Green Hill Schools. My name is Mutuzo Irene Esther and I'm the head branding, marketing, PR and stakeholder engagement, Green Hill Schools. Green Hill Schools is a conglomerate of three schools, which are Green Hill Academy, Primary Chibuli, Green Hill Primary School, Buwate, and Green Hill Academy Secondary. And as has always been the Green Hill School's culture, I would like to invite us to humble ourselves wherever we are and say this short prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for our lives. We want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for our country. We ask, Lord, that you guide and protect us as we go through these uncertain times. Keep us calm and keep us positive. Lord, as we go through this webinar, we ask that you guide each of the panelists as they engage in this discussion. May they be impactful to everyone in the audience. Lord, we ask, so God, that you protect us and guide us. We thank you for this day. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you very much for joining us once again. And uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we are all aware that schools have been temporarily closed, not only in Uganda, but the world over. Now this has presented challenges to not only the educators, but the students and parents as well. Today, we have a panel of very experienced uh, educators and parents that are going to be taking us through this webinar. And they'll be sharing with us how we can best engage our children at home, not only during the lockdown, but also post the lockdown. Panel today, we have Mrs. Joy Veronica Maraca. Mrs. Joy Veronica Maraka is a rector of Green Hill Schools and Joy is a seasoned educator with over 30 years experience and was part of the team that conceptualized and brought to life the Green Hill brand that has been in existence for over 26 years. Joy is passionate about serving her community and has served as Kampala South Uganda Red Cross. She is also a recipient of the Prestige Award. On our panel, we also have Mr. Moses Mayaja Kauma, who is the head of primary of the North Green School. Moses previously taught in a couple of schools in South London for five years and a Rainbow International School for 11 years. He's a Paul Harris Fellow of the Rotary Club of Kololo Kampala and also serves as a children's church pastor. Our third panelist, Mr. Oscar Semoya Musoke, who will be joining us later on, is a principal type by International School. Oscar is a seasoned educator with teaching and senior leadership of over 20 years. If you watch NBS television, he's, he's a familiar face as he's a top show host of the NBS Face Off. He's also a social political talk show host on Capital Radio a proud Rotarian and the founder of Chigo Thinkers, a public policy think tank. With the increased integration of ICT in education today, we needed to also hear from an ICT expert. And our expert today is Dr. Evelyn Chigozikahiji, who is a lecturer of the head of the Department of Information Technology at the School of Computing and Informatics Technology, Makapere University. Evelyn holds a PhD in computer and system sciences from Stockholm University, Sweden, and is a youth mentor and advocate for academic and social excellence. This panel would be incomplete if we didn't have one of our parents to share with us what her experience has been like during this lockdown. This is none other than Mrs. Gladys Tugume, who considers herself a mother to many. 
Mrs. Gladys is a trained pharmacist and a seasoned program manager with 17 years experience working to strengthen Uganda's health systems. Gladys is passionate about giving children excellent learning opportunities and impacting her community with the love of Jesus Christ. You're all welcome, our dear panelists, and thank you for joining us today. To the parents in the audience, in case you have any questions, please do drop them in the Q&A tab that is on your screen. And without further ado, I would like to invite Mrs. Joy Veronica Maraca, who will be giving us an overview of our theme for today. What does parental involvement really mean during these times? Over to you, Mrs. Maraca. Thank you very much, Irene. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Mrs. Maraca. Good morning. We are very excited together with all the panelists here to be able to have this discussion with all the parents. The topic for this morning is how to engage our children and all the people at home in this um, COVID-19 lockdown. What is a statement of fact is about 90% of the children in the world are actually at home now. And what has happened is that parents have become teachers, they've become experts in, I don't know, physics, in mathematics, in social studies, in uh, English, in uh, SST. Would like to say that those of you who have become nurses, others have become conflict resolution, a lot of things. And I stand here to just thank all of you. We want to say that you're doing the right thing. Nobody has a manual or nobody got a manual when we were going into this lockdown. So you cannot say that you did things wrongly. There is no manual, but we are just going to share. And my first point, as I give an overview, is that there is a big debate about um, 21st century parenting and parenting in those days. And this is what I have to say, that parenting in the 21st century is seemingly easier because there are so many gadgets to assist the parents. In the house, there are so many toys, toys which we have never seen before. Some of them we see on TV. When I go to town, I always go into a toy shop and I have never failed to see a new toy on the market. So there are toys, there are puzzles, there are dolls, there are cars in various shapes. All those things are available. Even out of the house, they are games which children can play. And if you have a computer and you go to Play Store, there are very many games you can play. You can teach yourself music, you can teach yourself a language, you can do all kinds of things. You can play an instrument, but our observation and what I want to say is that although there is so much available now, much more than they used to, that it is more complicated. And the difference between then and now is the fact that parents are not available. And so my strong recommendation in all this is the availability of the parents. We are all aware that parents, we are very busy, we all have to go to work, but the little time that you have with the children, please can we use it as quality time. And what can you do with the children? The panelists are going to tell us a lot of things that we can do with the children. But my pitch is on what you can do with the children off the screen. So you don't have to have an iPad. You don't have to have a huge computer. There are things which you can do with the children. I happen to be a teacher. And um, I, I, I look at some of these books. For instance, if you're the National 
if you're in the national curriculum um, and you're teaching science, they have to know about certain plants which they classify. And some of the plants are suckers, how they reproduce suckers. Now, the children don't know how the suckers, the bananas grow. So these are things you can engage your children in. Take them, let them see the sucker. You can even, even if you're in a small place, you can bring a sucker and put it in a sack. They need to know cereals and the cereals they need to know are things like sorghum and um, millet. And the children don't know the difference between sorghum and millet. They need to know legumes. So they are groundnuts and beans are in the same family, and yet you are saying groundnuts go under the ground. And she's, I said, I'm not saying, actually, groundnuts are under the ground. But they have not seen any of these things. So in this lockdown, can you do things which are off the screen, which will actually help these children? Uh, I think in P6 as well, there's something called sanitation. I don't know if parents, you know, that the children are supposed to know how to use a toilet. The difference between a toilet, sit on, not only how to use it, how to clean it. So these are things which can happen at home. So my pitch is really parents, let us engage our children let us do things with them. And that is academics, but even sports. In our neighborhood, I think there is one parent who has become a team leader. Recently, I saw he has even got a whistle. So he's playing with the children. So you can engage in sports, you can engage in cooking, you can engage in cleaning. There are so many things that can happen in the home. And I just want to remind us parents that we have limited time with the children. So every little time that you have, because I do appreciate that we don't have much, but every little time that we have, let us engage them. And even if you're dealing with e-learning, as um, the panelists are going to tell us, can you engage and see what can we make connections, very important connections. The children must learn to trust us. We must give them the values that are important to us. The teachers cannot do this all the time. Please engage the children, make friends with them, let them know what is right and what is wrong, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, how to pray, they are so many of those skills because very soon those children are going to leave home and the takeaway is going to be the engagement with the parents not the other things the complicated geography or chemistry that they learned in school so i would like to thank all the parents very much because i have talked to some parents and they're doing amazing things there is a parent I talked to, is a male parent, and he has three children, two boys and one girl, and they have recorded um, two music videos. So that's what they're doing at home. And I would like to thank them. We look forward to listening to that music. So please engage the children, make time for them, make friends with them, don't give them instructions, join them, in whatever you are doing. I'd like to thank you very much. And I would like Irene to invite the other panelists on board. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Maraka. And something that has truly stood out is that we need to expose our children to more than education. We need to expose them to the co-curricular activities, to the sports, to the values, so that they can become well-rounded. At this juncture, I would like to invite Mr. Kauma to give us an insight of how we can be able to handle our young learners. Many of us have learners that are about between the ages of three to eight, and these are very adventurous, they are very active, 
And unfortunately, at times cannot sit for over an hour to work on one task. Mr. Kauma, how do we handle these learners? You're welcome. Thank you, Irene, and good morning, everyone that is listening in. Um, thank you to Green Hill Schools for organizing this uh, webinar. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Maraka, for giving us an opportunity to share with the parents what we feel is helpful during this uh, difficult time. Um, I'm going to share with you a few tips that could be very, very helpful during this difficult time. And um, also on how to support your children's learning and development while at home. And I hope that um, they will be beneficial to you. Um, one of the things that we need to understand is that uh, before the children come to school, they have already started their education at home. So parents, you are the first teachers to your children. We come in as secondary, sec second teachers. You are the first teachers and that should be noted. And once we understand that, then we're able to facilitate and support learning in a positive way. Um, in order for us to have an effective and efficient way of supporting this kind of learning at home, there are things that need to be in place. Number one, you need to create a conducive environment. Simply meaning that you create a functional but personal space for your child. This is a place where your child can sit and complete tasks. You need to minimize distractions and disruptions within that environment. TV, radio, music playing in the background, family interruptions. I mean, parents are having discussions. Daddy is on a phone with a business partner. All that is interrupting the child's engaging within the activity that they are doing. So we need to be able to minimize that. We also need to have age appropriate books, both fiction and nonfiction. Fiction simply stories that they enjoy, stories that you can enjoy with them. So this is important that you have at least a couple of books, storybooks within, within the house. Nonfiction books, these are information books for reference. You may have a, a dictionary, a Bible, an encyclopedia, so that children can refer uh, to those um, books for information. Or if there are any questions, even for yourself, is a skill that children learn to be independent in their learning. So it's important when a child asks a question, you don't just give them the answer you ask pertinent questions that point them in the direction of where the answer is, but also pointing them to where they can find the answer, like a dictionary, like an encyclopedia, like a history book. That is very important from a very, very early stage. So you need to nurture that skill. It's very, very, very key. Our storybooks is simply you encourage reading at leisure. So it doesn't need to be very, very formal. It can be informal as well. When you enjoy a family story, you sit together and dad or mom, or the children can share the story. You can share this together as a family. In that way, the children is learning, but also understanding that the skill of reading is important, but also it makes learning fun at home. Because in most cases, we have been made to think that it has to always be formal, seated at the desk. It doesn't have to be all the time. 
you can create moments where you and your child are actually learning together. Mrs. Maraka did point out the things you can do at home. For instance, baking. Now, baking involves a lot of learning. It's in fact, uh, what I would call a cross-curricular subject or topic or event that you could do at home. In baking, there's mathematics. They learn how to measure. They learn how to use the weighing scale. But before even you go into the baking, they could write instructions how to bake a cake. Can they write those instructions down? Can they write that recipe down? It simply means you're supporting learning and learning is more practical at this point. So it's very, very key. It's also important that you create, uh, uh, you create routines and structure in your home. We, we, we are running as a school at, at the North Green School, we are running an online school. And then there is a routine and structure that children have to follow throughout the day from 7.30 to 3. And these children are at home. The teachers are just attending to them online, virtually. But it is important that the routines are there and the children are aware of those routines and structure. You create these routines by drawing up a timetable, a timetable that children will follow throughout this period. You are actually nurturing independent learning skills at a very, very early stage. The child will ask you, what are we doing now? And all you say, can you check on the timetable? And over time, the children will understand that I check my timetable and I know exactly what to do. For very, very young children, it's important that the tasks are shorter. Because remember, some children have very short attention span. And therefore, they cannot be on a task for longer periods. So it's better you create shorter, um, shorter tasks. Um, it is also important that the tasks that the children engage in are tasks that are not passive, but tasks that are more involving. So simply they are counting things, they are holding things, they are doing things. It's important that we cater for all the styles of learning as parents. Some children, just to let you know, that some children learn by hearing, others learn by seeing, and others actually learn by doing. And that is very important for a parent to know so that you can cut across by using all uh, or, or using a variety of activities to cater for all these learning styles. Okay, so that the child is not just seated there and listening uh, or is not just seated there and reading. There must be other activities that children may or have to do in order to learn. So that is very, very important. We need to limit or supervise or monitor TV watching and video gaming. Why do I say this? Because the graphics, in these videos and in the, in the TV, the people who have created all these things have their own agenda, but be aware that it affects children's attentions, uh, attention. They will, the children are never seated in one place comfortably. They will be fidgety, uh, they become a little bit clumsy just because they watch TV or are on video gaming for a long time. So it's important that this is regulated. The children are watching TV for a short time. In fact, some parents have banned TV during the week time and children only watch for uh, a few hours on a weekend. 
Why? Just to ensure that actually the child is not affected. Have rules and regulations in your home, but ensure that you're maintaining a positive disciplinary policy where a child is spoken to in a way that they understand what it is that they've done that is wrong. So they need to be able to depreciate from wrong to right. When I talk about a disciplinary policy that is positive, it simply means that the children know that there are consequences to certain things, okay? But there are also rewards if I achieve, okay? So there must be a balance to that. I know that we have been brought up by the canes and that, and I, I know that parents do quote the Bible quite often, uh, spare the rod and, it, contextually, you need to understand what that means because caning alone does not simply mean that you're I I implementing a disciplinary strategy. It doesn't. So there must be other ways of supporting your child learn. And some of the things are those that I've explained that structure, rewards, routines, those are important. But one other important thing is be consistent in all that you do. Be consistent in all that you do. Because if you're not consistent, then the children will know what to do. They will manipulate your systems because you are failing to be consistent in your own way. You're not following the things that you've put in place at home to support their learning, okay? Children learn from repetition. So you need to repeat certain things, especially for young children. You need to keep repeating some of these concepts, some of these issues that they need to follow through. Because if you do not do that, eventually they forget, they forget and move on to different things. But out of repetition, they will get to understand that this is actually what is expected of them. Um, some of the things you can do at home is promoting literacy through reading, okay? Set aside regular time to read to your children every day, every day. I mean, for me, I would, I, I, I would read when my son was about three, four, and five. I would read with him for just five minutes in the car or in a compound. But the difference that made was, I mean, immeasurable. Because right now he loves reading. He's now in uh, his all levels, but he loves reading. Why? Because that is something I introduced at a very, very early stage. So that is very important. Look at reading comprehension. Look at vocabulary. Look at decoding of words sounding out the letters, joining them and being able to read certain words. You as a parent, you will be able to know that my child can read these words, even before the teacher tells you. So like I said, you are the first teacher. So it's important that you actually watch out for that. Surround your child with reading materials. I've already talked about that. Encourage a wide variety of reading activities. That is very, very important for your children. Um, reading numbers and number manipulations, that is very key. It, like I say, it doesn't have to be at a desk. You can do this in your compound. You can play games that involve numbers. Support your child. And by the way, it, some of the things that you struggle with as parents are already there. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Google can always help you. Um, information is key. Work with your child. As you work with them, they are learning. They are learning. Show them what to do and they will follow through. Now, it's important to know that children do not necessarily understand like we do. Some children take long to grasp certain concepts. Um, you very well know that um, 
when you're teaching a child something or a concept, they, some of them take long to respond. And sometimes the parents get frustrated out of this. It's important to know that there are challenges in their development process. One, there's what we call information processing. How does that child process the information? Might not be the same way that you do because their brains are still developing. There's information retention. How long will they that keep that information? That's the more reason we need to keep repeating some of the things that we teach the children. So supporting them, reassuring them all the time, even when they get things wrong, reassure them, tell them that you can actually do them. Give them support, not give them answers. Show them where to go in order to achieve. That is more helpful and more supportive than giving them the answers. So those are a few tips that you can actually put in place for, um, for your children, the things that you can do to support your children. Uh, thank you very much. If there are any questions, I'll answer those uh, when the time comes. Thank you very much. Back to you, Ida. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kawuma. And I think one thing that we need to remember as parents is these little human beings are actually children. So we need to let them be children. As we schedule the activities, we need to allow for, yes, the academic activities, but the time to try out new things like uh, Mr. Kawuma has talked about the baking time to, for them to play, time to interact with us. I think that is very important. Now, we all know that uh, technology has become part and parcel of our lives. However, as we use this technology, we need to use it the right way for both us and even our children. Dr. Kahiji, how would you advise us to best integrate and regulate the use of technology as we help our children to develop? You're welcome. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Green Hill Schools, for giving me this opportunity to share with you. Um, good morning, parents and our listeners. Um, I'm going to talk about how best we can integrate technology in the children's learning at home. And uh, before you, when we're talking about technology or technology integration, what does that mean? Uh, it means um, adopting or using technology or technology devices or tools to support the learning process. And in order to integrate technology in the learning process, one requires a device or gadget uh, that is internet ready uh, or connected to the internet or a device that is a standalone and not connected but has educational or learning content. And these gadgets range from mobile phones, uh, laptops, desktop, desktop computers, iPads or tablets. Uh, we also have the radio and the television. And uh, the communication tools or the learning tools there in, uh, that we use uh, for uh, learning, uh, we have uh, Google Class. I guess some of you have engaged with that. Google Meet, Zoom, we are using Zoom, so this can be a learning platform. Uh, I've seen people using WhatsApp, uh, Moodle, WebEx, um, radio, uh, radio, um, the government has put in place uh, through the Ministry of Education uh, re educational programs on, on uh, a number of radios uh, starting from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We have uh, TV educational programs on TV. Um, um, I know NBS runs an um, uh, educational slot between 10 and 1, uh, 10, starting at 10 or 11 till 1 p.m. Uh, if you have DSTV and you are connected, they have a dedicated channel, um, channel 316 and 317, that is dedicated to education. So you can um, engage uh, your children um, in, in those different um, learning platforms. 
So why do we need to integrate uh, ICT in learning? Um, ICT offers an opportunity uh, for student-centered learning, where students take control of their learning, they learn at their own time, they learn at their own pace, and they can learn anywhere. So they don't have to be in a classroom setting. Um, ICT supports improved communication. Uh, in this COVID-19 lockdown era, we need to integrate and this ranges from a teacher to teacher interaction where they share experiences on how to conduct online classes. You have a student student interaction. Uh, if they have an assignment that requires them to collaborate, uh, then they'll be able to, uh, to interact uh, in an online environment. And indeed, teacher student interaction has also increased as students reach out to their teachers on aspects that are not clear to them. Um, ICT, uh, in a sense, supports uh, a process of inquiry. In all, ICT supports a process of inquiry, and that's um, uh, uh, through communication. Um, another aspect that ICT supports is quick access to information and learning resources. There are a number of online education content um, uh, or texts or videos or practical experiences, uh, experiments that are available uh, for, the, for the students to engage in while at home. Uh, they, uh, you could find these resources from uh, Khan Academy has a number of resources. Uh, we have Colibri. Uh, this is supported by um, the government of Uganda and uh, UNICEF. It's a free e-learning platform that you can use. We have uh, .shule, um, .org, or .ug. Uh, and this, uh, you need to pay uh, to access the, the, the learning material. Uh, there are links to Quality Tutor Uganda. They have a number of resources and revisenow.net that you can use uh, to, to engage uh, the, the, your children while at home. I will send through these um, resources so that you, you can uh, look at them. So if your children are also interested in programming or you, they have aspects of programming, they can download uh, applications such as Scratch. Uh, Scratch is a free application for Windows that allows you to generate your own graphic, graphical animations and, and games uh, in a very easy way. So, that way uh, you, 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 you can give uh, your children tasks um, and if they are interested in programming, they can, they can uh, engage in, in, in that. Um, so ICT prepares learners for the real world or the workplace. So technology is here to stay. So, um, and we need to use it to create efficiency uh, in service delivery in organizations. So organizations need staff that are tech savvy. So um, while you engage your children um, at this stage um, of, of, of their life, you are actually preparing them for the workplace because um, they are able to, um, when, when they get there, they know what to do. Um, ICT also caters for individuals with differences. Students learn at different paces and have different abilities. Uh, because it is anywhere, anytime, any place, um, it can, uh, with, with ICT, they can engage in, in their learning at, in, in a way they, they learn best. Um, it also stimulates and motivates or engages learning um, in order for them, um, students are able to search the web for what they desire to acquire knowledge, um, um, to acquire knowledge. So then how do parents engage, uh, how best should parents engage um, with ICT in the uh, children's learning process? So while engaging uh, the children learning at home, you should uh, take or advise that you take a blended learning approach, an approach that uh, Mr. Kauma mentioned and uh, an example uh, maybe I would say blended learning is a style of education where a 
uh, student learns via electronic or online media, as well as a traditional or physical face-to-face um, -face, uh, learning or teaching. So blended learning offers a flexibility on how learning materials are presented uh, for the student um, in a variety of ways. So uh, parents can uh, engage their students in um, academic uh, practical exercises in a blended manner. Um, for example, if you're learning fractions, when they engage in, in an online class or material fractions, you can, uh, they can also master the fractions in the physical environment through practice. Uh, for example, I think the common um, example here is the posho, mingling posho. Uh, you can cut it up in pieces and serve portions to each family member at the table. If daddy takes half of the posho, then mommy takes a quarter. Um, then you could ask the children to share half of what is remaining after dad has served. Uh, so while they are engaging this in a practical manner, they're actually learning how to um, manipulate uh, the fractions. Um, I would also talk about, um, well, now the, 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 the children are engaged in, 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 in the online environment. You've opened up the computers for them. How do you protect or regulate the children's use of technology because uh, it can become a disaster. So um, um, one is that you can make it a routine to have a conversation with your children about which application they plan to download and use, which website they plan to visit. Um, you need to set the boundaries uh, based on, on, on their ages, what not to do. Um, Secondly, you need to set up a working space, and uh, Mr. Kalma talked about that as well, in, in your house that is accessible to you and other family members who may want to check, uh, check in on the child as they are engaging uh, with or in, interacting with the technology. So as they are likely to use the same machine to do their homework or study, as well as in being um, engaging in some sort of entertainment or socializing with friends, uh, which is okay as long as they do a good job in managing their time and prioritizing their schoolwork. Um, you need to help your children learn to use safe and precise search terms uh, so as to find the information they need online and uh, not to be exposed to potentially inappropriate images or or websites. Um, maintain a reasonable time limit for the device, device use or technology use at home. So if you set up a reasonable time expectation, um, if you set up a time through which your child should be engaging in technology, when you take um, the devices away, you won't uh, have any potential resistance. Um, your child's physical well-being is also important and also worth considering. So you need to encourage them to sit proper, properly and uh, develop a good, uh, you know, a good po sitting posture. As they need to take breaks while they're engaging with technology, walk around, use their body to be active for a few minutes uh, before returning to the device if necessary. Um, in terms of um, uh, parental control, and that is a, a concern, you can use, you, you need to, uh, I will share a, a website, you need to monitor what your child is doing uh, or using, uh, what applications they're up to on, uh, when they're engaging in, um, with the computers. Um, so, your, your, your children, I think the key here is communication. What is acceptable in your home and what is not acceptable. And uh, finally, uh, you need to 
pay attention on how you as a parent use technology when your kid is watching you. So how do you use, you, how do you use or engage with uh, your technology? It's important for them to see you balance your work and uh, home life as well as your use of technology. Um, monkey see, monkey do. So you need to be careful on how you engage uh, with the technology so that uh, they are able to um, adopt as you are their role model. Um, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kahiji. And something you've mentioned is monkey see, monkey do. If I'm on my phone the whole day, it probably means my child will learn that habit from me. So I really do need to be careful. Now, Mrs. Gladys Tugume, I understand you have eight children under your direct care. And I'm wondering, when we shared, the first question that went through my mind is, how are you handling these children who are of different ages, in different classes, with different learning needs? <laughs> how are you handling and what has been your experience? Please do share with us. Thank you very much, Irene, and uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, I am on this panel to share the, the views from a fellow parent and uh, most of the challenges that I have seen and how we've gone about them. So briefly, as Irene has put it, I have many children in my household. I have babies and then I have the older children. So I have about six classes represented in this house, uh, minus the babies that are not yet in, in school, but are still learning. And then these six classes are from four different schools. So I have S5, I have uh, S2, I have uh, P7, I have P6, I have P5, and then the little one. So it's uh, a bit of a challenge, but uh, briefly to share our experience. One, we, like uh, some of the people have said, we set up a very clear structure and me, I'm going to speak mainly to how. So what we did is we have, emphasize the waking up time. We've put a rule, no one wakes up after the father has woken up. We've decided clearly what time we shall have our meals, when we shall do the chores, and what chores are done on which days, just to support the parents here. For example, all children know that they remove their bed sheets on a Monday and they have to be washed. They know that they have to wash their clothes on Saturday. They know that they have to mop their bedrooms every other day. They know that they're the ones to set the table and unset the table and wash the dishes. The girls set the table and the boys will unset the table. And uh, maybe the secondary school students will wash the plates today. So we have a very clear chore timetable for the children to be engaged. Otherwise, because the home is very big and busy, even the other people that help around will be very tired. Then we know when to do the academic studies and uh, when to play the outdoor evening time, we all go out and uh, play some games. So around the home, whereas other people say it's not looking nice, we have the netball part, we have the basketball, we have someone who likes tennis, so the wall is getting a bit uh, muddy. Then uh, we have the footballer, we have so many balls that have uh, been damaged just to support the the, the structure that we have set up. TV is off during the day and we turn it on in the evening. The children have an hour and we must watch news. So, and we have a clear bedtime. This is uh, very important because some of the teenagers would prefer to sleep late and wake up late, but because we have a waking up time, there has to be a sleep time. We have organized the garage. We noticed that we don't need the garage space. So three years ago, we turned the garage into a would-be study center. So we bought some tables and chairs and uh, equipped with a whiteboard and a marker so that we can support the study, but I can also sit in and do my other work as the children do study. We've supported the children to develop timetables and I know parents who have had challenges here. I have a child who has so far developed 13 timetables. 
but we still do keep them changing. The timetables have to cater for both the house chores and the academic study. So we have clear set time and depending on the class, some of them have less study time compared to the others that need to be in the study room more often. Then uh, as the parents and for us, we keep a record of the teacher's numbers because we cannot ably know how to support through each of the content. So when I get a challenge, I will call up a teacher and the teacher will help. Now I will help you understand parents that for my S5 girl, she's doing trigonometry today because she's, in, she's doing BCM. How will I know how to do course and sign and turn if I am not uh, a mathematician? But when I don't know, I will call up the teacher or I'll call up a peer. For example, I have got a number of a SMAC A6 student who helps my girl who is doing BCM when she has challenges. So it's about knowing where do I get the support to help the child study better. So each of these children will have different uh, study needs. So I, do, I get those numbers for help. And then for practical learning as a family, this time we've endeavored to support the science pr practical. So when we eat sugar cane, we go and plant the sugar cane. So I'm looking at our sugar cane and it has already started uh, pulling out the leaves. We have planted the maize. We have done the different uh, methods of propagation. Now our house help was kind enough to support the children in P5, P6 and P7 to learn the different parts of the sigiri, the charcoal iron, the lantern, the the things that are in the kitchen that they would otherwise not know what the different things do. So everyone in the home has been involved in trying to support the, the study. But however, remember that in this home being six learners, they have different learning abilities. We have the self, the self-motivated learners, those ones we agree on the timetable, we set the daily output that we want to study, and they will go ahead and read and study. My role as a parent, I'll come and ask a few questions. I have the books, I have their books that they have the notes in, so I will ask and see if they can actually reproduce what they have read, and I will be satisfied. For such learners, they will even tell me that they need support, and I'll be able to link them to the teacher or to the peers that they need to link to. However, I have those that are not self-directed. Those ones, I practically sit with them at the table when I'm doing my own work, and I ensure that they are putting in the time, especially if they are the older children. I want to see that they have put in the time. I want to see that they are writing short notes when they read their notes so that I engage them actively. But in addition, I have had to take them through some of the content, I and the father, take them through the content. If I am conversant with chemistry, for example, this week we went into covalent bonding. It's the, the child feels that if mommy can read, then I also need to pull up my socks and read. But in addition to motivate them, I have helped them to excel at those areas they think they are good at. Some of my non-self-directed children are very good at cooking. So you'll find that they are preparing the meals you find that they are the best sports people, so you help them to take the lead when it comes to sports, not that uh, you're only concentrating on the areas that they are not very strong in. So when they see that you're balancing them out and you're interested in their own uh, interest, then they pick up even the little interest in the academics that they may not be having. Some of the challenges that I have seen as I deal with the children during this time is one, uh, they have already alluded to it. All of these people need gadgets because work has been sent on the electronic media. And yet we are still skeptical on the use of internet by the different age groups. So to sort of mitigate the risk of going to the wrong sites, we have ensured that there is no ownership of these gadgets. The gadgets are shared so the children learn to keep a check on each other because each one will be using the same internet with this, that, uh, that uh, the other was using. In addition, we have tried to print the work so that we don't have 
them keeping on the gadgets much longer. So if you're able to access printing services, it's better that you print out the work and help them to limit the use of the internet. To teaching the children of mixed abilities in the same home poses some challenges because you have those that are able to get it very fast and those that you need to support. So those that you need to support first feel you're a bit um, putting undue attention on them that makes them a bit uneasy before their own siblings. They do not want, they also want their egos to be protected. So as a parent, you learn to balance and uh, not bring it out in a way that it breaks the ego of the child. But at the same time, the one you're not giving a lot of attention to also feels that you don't like them that much because then you're concentrating on the one that you think you should support. So in here, you keep a balance, but we are not the best at it. We keep learning as, we, as the days go on. Two, the distractions for the children are too many. You leave them in the reading room, you'll find them in the fridge the next minute. So as parents, we have to know that, like someone has said, the attention spans can get so low, but uh, we need to keep refocusing. I keep refocusing the, the children on the priorities for them to study. Now, another thing that I have faced is that these children, I'm not saying children of nowadays because I'm not very old, they are having their own vision of success. When I was growing up, I don't remember saying that being a musician was the thing that I needed to do that it will push me. Or I don't remember saying football was the career that I could chase now. But for now, in these six children, I have those who are so focused on becoming musicians. Some say that football is what they are going to use. Another one will tell you I'm going to be a model. So I have spent a lot of time now taking them through the basic routines of a footballer. We watch videos, biographies. If someone says I want to be a footballer, then I'm going to look for Messi's uh, routine and help them appreciate that Messi is a very disciplined person who spends over eight hours of his day practicing. We don't, what we see on the TV and the money that he's earning is not out of uh, no, no discipline. So because they have watched and seen that even the best musicians, the best footballers are putting in a lot of effort, they are then also beginning to notice that as their time as pupils right now is very critical. So as parents, we need to know what are our children interested in and how we can ably help them determine whether it is that easy to achieve what they think that they are interested in right now. Because even those that seem to have it, it's not necessarily that easy to earn the money that they are earning in that big volume. So then I've discovered that uh, also, these children, I can't shape them so much. Like some take home messages, the encouraging of discipline. The one thing that has worked for us during this time is a proverb a day. For those that are subscribing Christians, because we've tried to tell the children to be disciplined, and it was becoming a lot of words. So we decided that as a family, because there are 31 proverbs in the, in the Bible, we shall read one of the chapters every day. Now, these have had a very big impact on the children because they're the ones that read them and we expound and they also discuss. And uh, this week they are like, uh, so when King Solomon talks of a fool, am I a fool? So it has helped us learn to start shaping the, the discipline that we have so long been wanting to have in the, in the children. So it can help most of us that are in this uh, group to take up. Another part of discipline is just teaching the children to respect every elder that is in the, is in the household. For example, when they wake up, I mean, you're a teenager, but you must greet everyone, whether they are the house help, whether they are the shamba boy, whether there is a guard, uh, it's your sister who is younger than you, you just don't wake up and uh, sit at the table simply because uh, you have become a teenager. So just learning to respect the elders and everyone that is around you and just say good morning and uh, let not the world sulk because you're sulking has uh, helped us to emphasize some of the core disciplines around the home that are important. 
Now, another thing that I've learned is that the children are not consistent, and this has already been alluded to by the other people. They do not understand the importance of routine and uh, self-application. So let's teach them to follow routines and apply themselves, even if they want to do something else in life. And uh, let's keep the structures around the home about the child, not about us, the adults. So if uh, the structure needs to change a bit, let's welcome the change for the better of the children. Thank you very much. That's briefly what I had to share. Thank you very much, Mrs. Tugume. And I must say that you have really mastered the art of understanding your children. That is something we parents need to learn from you. If we do not understand our children, no one will be able to understand them the best way. At this juncture, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Oscar Semoya Musoke, who will be joining us through a call from Mrs. Maraka. Unfortunately, he cannot join us uh, on video, but he will be joining us for a call from Mrs. Maraka to tell us how we can handle our teenagers. We have already got information about how to handle the young learners, but now we have our young adults who want to be treated like adults, but are in fact our children and need guidance. Mr. Oscar Semoya Musoke, through Mrs. Maraka, please do share with us how we can best do it. You're welcome. to be influential in their community, to be kind and have concern for 
others or to be leaders because you've heavily invested in them anyway. These are very, very commendable uh, concepts, very, very commendable uh, ideas. If you think about it in that light, have you done anything towards this in this COVID origin? I'd like to tell you that if you don't pay attention to this, you are going to struggle a lot in supporting children to learn at home. In a field most likely to succeed, tend to interpret its um, director. Advice is that we shouldn't be focusing on teaching students what to learn, but how to learn. I'd like you to note that. Don't teach them what to learn, but how to learn. This way, the next generation, your children, my children, our children, are going to be better equipped to tackle the challenges of the future with creativity and adaptability. I repeat that one again. Teach them how to learn. I do hope you can get it down. So, before we get into the meat of perhaps the advice I should be giving, let's consider the future of work. When 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 I watch a film most likely to succeed, or sometimes when we give it talk, many times we think or create scenarios of the developed world. But COVID has brought some reality to us. So when we think about the future of work in this COVID nineteen season, called COVID nineteen season, we are witnessing the future of work. Here I am, I'm talking to five hundred people in my study at home. My fellow panelists are nowhere near me, but we are all delivering on the same topic. 500 people. This webinar was so full, and I, one of the hot one of the at 20 minutes to 11. That means that we're already in different type of work. Did we know we could do this six months ago? I don't think so. We here also know many successful people that are not doing what they study. There are even some Ugandans who are working from home well before the pandemic. I don't know if you're one of them, but they are there. They've already uh, adjusted their work schedule and are engaging in other different types of work. In Uganda now, one can order for a border border via social media. Um, yeah, the uh, same borders, uh, Uber, and social media will deliver uh, border border to you. I use the example of border border because then we have challenge border border. You could order for food on Jumia social media. Has in this kind of work grown, especially now in uh, border border time? And border border now of the very are they part of a very needed essential worker? These are valid questions. The world is changing. And in two thousand and six Ted Dinterspace, the producer uh, and narrator of Complex to Succeed, thought that soon even lawyers may not be needed. That is uh, documented in the documentary in 2006. And he was saying, you may not need lawyers apart from physically going to court. And the argument then was that there's a lot of documentation that Mr. Google is ready to supply. Right now, if it's like a will, by just asking Mr. Google to give me some samples and not need to visit a lawyer to do that. In COVID season, it is now official uh, because President Museveni thinks that we only need 30 lawyers and those are enough a day. So there you are. Mm. Many jobs and services are disappearing with the advent of technology and this is bound to continue. So what should we do? Ted Benta Smith in the film most likely to recommend that this is what you must ask your child to do. If you have pen and paper, I recommend first write it down. Write down one purpose. Okay? This is what you must ask your child to do one purpose. Two essential skills and mindset. Mindset two words, mind and set. So one word purpose. Two is essential skills and mindset. Three is agency. 
agency as in agent, A-T-E-N-C-Y, agency, and four, deep retained knowledge. Hello, we, we seem to have lost uh, Mr. Oscar. And as we get back to him, I'm going to ask uh, our panelists to start taking on some of the questions that you have uh, given us today. And I'll begin with most, uh, Mr. Moses Mayanja Kauma. Mr. Moses, there's a, there's a parent here asking how, what is the best time to schedule learning activities for a young learner? Okay, um, yeah, that, that's a very good question. I think morning hours are quite uh, productive for everyone, even adults. So morning hours would be good for um, study time um, and uh, afternoon hours will be more of uh, more involving activities. So I would say yes, morning hours when they're still fresh, yes. Uh, and another question related to that is how much work would you advise a child to revise per day? Um, that's dependent on one, the ability of the child to the environment. Because if the environment is uh, disruptive, the child will not concentrate on what they are doing. So that really depends on um, the ability of the child. They are, children that are really self-motivated uh, and, and they are able to take on more than others. So it depends, you have to gauge how much your child can do before they become very fidgety or, or, uh, or disruptive. So um, it's something that you have to figure out as a parent. If I gave him more work or um, uh, for some time, will they be able to complete that work? But also, just be aware that some children... Go back to Mrs. Gladys Tugume. Mrs. Gladys Tugume, we have two scenarios here. One of a parent who is currently not living with their child, and another of a parent who works from eight to five, and they get to see their child only at the end of the day. How would you advise this parent to best monitor their children's activities when they are not even living with their children. Over to you. Thank you very much, Irene. And uh, most of us after this uh, lockdown will then go back to our offices and we shall be in that category. So what, what has worked for me is that uh, the home, like I mentioned, has to be structured around the, the children. If you have a house help, and uh, this I speak because I have an old house help. She's over 46 years old, so she's able to take instruction a bit better and the children will do the respect. As parents, one, we have to, to help the children appreciate the structure that works even in, our, in their absence. So I seem to see that the one, if the child is self-driven, it will be very easy because then you will give them an assignment and maybe check in when you're at office and find out how far they are. But if they are not, then you need to equip the house help with uh, that same knowledge that I need my child to study between 10 and 11, between 9 and 10, they will be on BBS. On, uh, between 11 and 12, I expect them to study. They will have a break time at this time. So that uh, when you come back, it is the child knows that they are accountable to someone else and not only you. And this, I honestly would want parents to take up, that the children should not only be accountable to us as parents, but they should be accountable to the other structural positions within the home setting. It would ease our work much, much better. But uh, I think, again, since we are in the E, E sector and we are discussing this, you can always call in and uh, have a catch up with the children. But for me, I usually leave the instructions home and uh, make sure that the children respect the authority that I have left behind. I can even leave the authority with the older child or even a younger child that seems to be more responsible. 
so that they check they check on each other while I am out for for work. I don't know if that helps. Okay. Yes, uh, I understand you have teenagers in your house. How have you handled the topic of relationships with them? Okay, so Irene, like, um, like I said, I'm from the health background. I like opening up every topic to a child when they reach a particular age. So me and my teenagers, we have talked everything all about relationships. I have opened up, I've told them what it means, when will they be ready? For example, before I came for this call, my son was asking my older girl in S5 that, so what are the qualities you want in a husband? And I told him, no, stop asking a husband. Now is the time to study. Always we have to discuss this topic almost on a daily. So, but also remember their WhatsApp groups, you'll see to find that they are those who are almost cross-bordering onto relationships. So you will, I talk to them openly. I tell them that, that, I tell them about sex, for example, the dangers of engaging in early sex, why they must not engage in early sex. I open up uh, the, the topic of any topic that I can discuss because from the health perspective, maybe I'm more comfortable. I try to delay it as much as I can, but I also know that at this time their hormones are raging and they like to receive affirmation from this opposite sex more than they, will, than they would receive it even from myself. So I am very cognizant of that and I ask them if there is anyone they think has crossed to the point of, the, of uh, becoming a, a girlfriend. And they will tell you, so they will introduce one today, they will introduce one the other two days, and then you cancel and uh, tell them the importance of not uh, playing around with the uh, girls, of not playing around with any boys, of not thinking that they can get their approval from, from the system because now they are very open and they get uh, engaged. As a parent, I'm learning. I am a young parent, not very old teenage parent, but one thing I know is openness it worked for me and my mother and i think the more open i am with the children the better we shall be at solving some of the challenges that we get even in this area okay thank you very much uh, mrs gladys to gume uh dr evelyn kahiji there's a parent here who is saying that her daughter is extremely addicted to her phone there are all these new digital platforms, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Telegram, there's so many, and our children have become addicted to these platforms. How do we best handle them? Um, um, I think that is a common place where children are addicted to their phones. But like I, I mentioned earlier, you need to communicate uh, time for technology, and time for doing other things. So it's important that you have a conversation with your children on when to engage um, uh, with the technology. Yes, TikTok is good, but it has to be done at the right time um, uh, when, when you have actually discussed the space. You can actually get into a negotiation. When do you want to, so that uh, they own uh, the decision on when they should have the technology uh, or engage with it and when they should not be able to. Thank you very much. Another question for you is how do we support our children when it comes to the area of cyberbullying? Cyberbullying is something that is becoming quite quite big today with all this internet and our teenagers and children are being affected. How do we help them? Okay, um, and I, I think this all also boils down to you having a, com a conversation uh, with your children. Uh, the most important thing that they need to know that they are special and uh, self-love um, starts with them and those people who, uh, and, and then uh, the people who, the immediate family. So, if they are bullied online they, online, they should know the telltale signs and uh, avoid 
uh, engaging with such uh, groups, um, and, and I guess also counseling them. So cyberbullying is real. Uh, the, our children are highly tech savvy that they will even Photoshop or photo, you know, uh, do everything um, to, 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 to really put down um, their friends, but uh, it's, it's about engagement and also telling them or advising them to choose the right friends, friends that are useful to them and not friends that uh, will hurt their feelings um, in any way. But it also starts with them. Yes, yes. another question for you is uh, what platforms would you advise the parents to take on to effectively monitor what the children are doing, both when they are not around, but also the platforms within their gadgets to see probably these are the sites that my child uh, goes to and things like that. Some okay. parents needed to know some platforms. Okay. Um, for my children, um, I, I normally tell them that if you are seeing something that you don't want me to see, then you are, you're looking at or engaging in the wrong thing. So uh, they need to know what is right and wrong. And you have to have an open discussion on what is, is, uh, is right and wrong and what is right within uh, the, your family statement or your norms. Um, you, sh when you should also have a conversation with them that you will be able to, uh, to take their phones away and check. So, once they know, and, and this will, should be at a random time or period, so they need to know that they, they, they need to engage um, in, in the right content or see the right things. Um, in the chat, I have put uh, a link um, uh, to a website that is, provides a useful resource. It's called, um, con, uh, just a minute. Uh, connect.org. Um, it gives, uh, it's connectsafely.org, connectsafely.org. Um, it gives you uh, resources on how parents uh, should uh, utilize monitoring tools, and there are a number of monitoring tools that are available to that uh, website. So, for more ideas on how best to utilize monitoring tools, and see, uh, uh, you need to go to that site, connectsafely.org, uh, to see what parents should think about before using parental uh, controls, and also to guide um, their children in online engagement. It also talks about, it has a number of resources on online uh, cyberbullying uh, that uh, parents can, can use. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kahije. Mrs. Maraka, the next questions are for you. Uh, now, I am a child, I, I am a parent, and I'm expected to help my child to answer their holiday work, their homework, and things like that. But I'm not conversant with what they're being taught. One of the parents has even said, I am not a reader, but I am to teach my child to read. How would you advise me to best handle this? Thank you, Irene. Um, and thank you very much, all the, the, the parents and panelists on. I see we are running out of time. But I want to say that children learn how to read by listening, by listening to other people, and preferably the parents. And so if the parents feels that they don't like reading, then you have to get somebody who likes reading to do that role or to perform that role for you. There, there, there are just no two ways about it. It could be the older brother, it could be the auntie, it could be the mother. But children learn a lot by listening to adults reading. Now, um, there was something else that came in um uh, about the teenagers how do you deal with the teenagers what do you talk to them about and my my take on that is just tell them as much as you know 
don't hide anything. The chances are by the time they're asking you anything, they've already checked on the internet, so they want to know how much you're going to tell them. That is why I started off by saying that give them a value system so that they know that although there is so much available, certain areas are no go. But do not hide any information, especially to do with sexuality, from the teenagers. And finally, the parent who said that um, she or he does not have the information of the child's work in P1, P2, or secondary, or maybe even university, then I think the thing there is to, first of all, trust the child, and then trust the people who are teaching that child and get into a relationship so that they can guide you and inevitably guide the, the child. There is so much information on the internet, as we have been told, but sometimes you can't just transpose information from the internet. So it is important to get back to the people who have been teaching. And my final one is um, parents, you have been very good during this lockdown with the children. We hope that if and when they do come back to school, you will continue to engage them. Stay safe and be blessed. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, our last questions uh, will go to Mr. Moses Mayanja Kauma. There's a parent asking how can they handle their autistic child in kindergarten school or a child that only likes one subject? And another is asking how they can best motivate their child to take on their work. Uh, she says that her child gets bored by the work, at times feels like, like it's too much and wants to take her time, yet she has to complete this work. So how can you best support these parents? Mr. Kauma. Um, thank you very much, Irene. Um, autism has um, a wide spectrum, so it depends uh, where that child is on that spectrum. Um, sometimes children may require um, a specialist person or a professional person in terms of handling autistic children. So it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody can actually uh, be able to support an autistic child. Uh, however, if uh, it is on the mild side, it simply means getting to understand that child better what triggers them off, what calms them down, and how their attention span is. Um, once you know those aspects of a child, then you're able to relate with them. And if you're able to relate with them and they are confident um, in you, then they are able to follow through with your instructions. So, Mainly autistic children must be familiar with their environment. Their environment should not have any um, triggers or things that really upset them. Um, so once we understand their condition, then we are able to support them better. So I, I would advise uh, that parent probably to have those pointers through so that um, they, they are able to support their children. But also, um, like I said, uh, looking at what interests their children. What is it that they prefer to do? Because remember that that is a condition they're in and therefore you cannot treat them the same way you treat uh, a child in a normal or in a mainstream education. So it's better that we understand them and we support them accordingly uh, or according to what their needs um, uh, are. Uh, that is how I would look at um, supporting an autistic child, but also actually seeking professional advice because 
sometimes it's not enough for an educationist to advise you. It's probably going on further to find somebody within the special education needs department who can support you with the needs on, or on how to support the needs of that particular child in that condition. Um, yes, about being bored. So children do get bored, especially if they're uh, engaged in an activity that does not motivate them. So how do you motivate them? Number one is knowing what motivates them, is knowing what they love to do. And once you know what they love to do, that is what you use to motivate them to uh, be able to complete the tasks that they have to do. But also, let's be mindful that that is not the way life is. And we have to train our children that life isn't what we would want it to be like, but we must do the things that we have to do. So there are things that children will have to do even when they don't um, uh, necessarily like to do them just like adults, because that is what life is. So at a very young age, we teach them that, you know what, I know you maybe are not uh, very fond of this activity, but unfortunately you have to do it. Uh, also put some rewards, something they really like as um, a motivator, so that they know that once I uh, work through this activity, then there's something ahead once I've completed it. It's really ensuring that our, our, our children are tenacious so it's not just about resilience, it's about tenacity. Children being able to work through tasks, even without uh, having any hindrances, but sticking on through until completion. That is one thing that as parents in this generation, we need to drum tenacity. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kaoma. And thank you to all the panelists for comprehensively answering the questions uh, from the parents today. Uh, just a few takeaways I would like to share with us uh, before we end is one, in order to groom a well-rounded child, you need to engage your child in both academics and co-curricular activities. Before the educators at school, we, the parents, are the first teachers. Monkey see, monkey do. Whatever we do, our children imitate. To better support our young learners, we need to create for them friendly routines that balance between academic and co-curricular activities. Let them be children. Create a bond with your teenager, as this will allow them to easily share with you their struggles and experiences. Understand your child. If you do not understand your child, no one will do it best. And lastly, we as parents have a big, big role to play when it comes to supporting our children. So from everything the panelists have discussed, I urge us to go back and put them into practice. So that together with the schools, together with the educators, we groom the best individuals for tomorrow. Individuals that can take on ICT challenges, individuals that can take on day-to-day -day challenges, and individuals that are disciplined and well-rounded. Thank you very much for joining us. At this juncture, I'm just going to invite each of the panelists to just share with us their parting shots in one second before we say goodbye to our audience. And I'll begin with Mr. Uh, Moses Mayanja Kauma. Any parting shots for us? Thank you. Remember, your child is your treasure and you know what to do with that treasure, okay? So it is your role, it's your responsibility. As much as the children probably at some point will go back to school, but generally it is you, the parent who is the first teacher. I hope that you've benefited from what I have shared with you. And I believe that you're going to be a better teacher now that you have been equipped. Thank you and may God bless you as you keep safe during this COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Evelyn Kahiji, any parting shots for us? Yes, um, technology is fun. Um, we need to embrace it. Um, as um, extracurricular activity, you could dance and record those TikTok challenges with your children, um, engage in games, uh, Scrabble, chess, uh, Candy Crush. Those are the games that I engage with, with the girls. Uh, four picks, one word, very educative but fun game. Uh, use the technology to communicate with friends and family as we stay safe and stay home. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Maraka, any parting shots for us? Uh, thank all the panelists uh, who have been here with us this afternoon. Thank you very much. I just want to say one thing is that children should be given boundaries. They should be given boundaries on what they can do and what they cannot do. I think that is very important. And where I started is make time for the children as much as possible. Stay safe and stay at home. And then the parting shot from Mr. Semwayam Soke. Yes, Mr. Semwayam Soke. Thank you so much um, for inviting me to participate in this. Uh, just quickly, I wanted to say create a proper reading area. Unfortunately, you will have to get some technology and the data, uh, avoid distraction, get all distraction, get all study material in one place, agree on break, and set realistic goals. And a, a final, final one before I uh, and, uh, respond to a question. Think about re deep retained knowledge for everything children are doing. They should try and understand. There's a story from Salman Khan, he's the director of MIT, you can look it up, he has an analogy of building a room. If your builder ever told you, this house is 75% ready, would you sleep very well? I doubt that you would. Now the question on relationship, as Mrs. Marker has just said, build uh, boundaries, establish boundaries. Thank you very much. Mrs. Gladys Tugume, any parting shots? Yes, I think to all parents to learn that uh, character or charity begins at home. So we have a great authority as the parents. But also when I was growing up, there was this placard in our home that read that when a child lives with criticism, they learn to be timid. But when they learn, when they live with love, they learn to open up to the world. So let's love our children, let's accept them the way they are, and let's help them become better individuals. We are shaping tomorrow's ministers and presidents and we have people's husbands and wives in our families so let's be the best parents that we can ever be to the children that God has given us thank you very much thank you very much thank you to all our panelists and everyone in the audience that has joined us here today as has always been the Green Hill School's culture, I would like to invite us to virtually join our hands and say the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank Please stay safe and amen. Amen. Please let us stay safe. Remember, it takes all of us to kick Corona out of this world. So stay safe. Say hello to our learners. We miss them and we can't wait to have them back. May God bless you all and thank you very much.